Hi, I'm Dr. Joel Gardner, and today we're going to talk about why you should study human performance technology. A lot of times I get questions from students or, or instructional designers who ask, why should I study human performance technology? I just want to be an instructional designer. Or they might ask, why is there a performance technology course in this instructional design program? Well, today I'd like to tell you my opinion on why it's so important. Now, I want to give you my background, okay? I am an instructional designer at my core. I have two advanced degrees in instructional design, instructional technology, and learning sciences. I've read hundreds of articles, hundreds, literally, maybe in the thousands of articles on instructional design, theory and practice, best practices, technology, and so forth. Um, I've written many, many articles that have been published in, in high-ranking journals on instructional design, and I've designed instruction for uh, several organizations for many years. I've even taught instructional design for years at the master's and the instructional, or at the, and the doctoral level. So I, I'm, and I'm not telling this to you to brag, but to tell you that I love instructional design. So what I'm giving, I'm giving it from that perspective. So why should we study human performance technology if we're just instructional designers? Well, let's talk about it for a minute. And the, I think the first thing to do is to compare the differences and the similarities between instructional design and performance technology. So let's talk about some of these, the, the differences. So First of all, instructional design, in my opinion, is focused on knowledge. And I would even say also focused on a knowledge gap. In most models, we're trying to figure out what the learning needs are so that we can address those needs. So it's focused on the knowledge gap. Um, another thing that instructional design is focused on is design for learning. Design for learning. We're learning focused. We want to help people learn and understand and be able to do, right? So design for learning. And then finally, something that I would say is, and maybe we could debate this, but I would say that instructional design is somewhat removed or isolated from the working or performance context in which the performance takes place. And what I mean by that is when a training takes place, when we design a training, it's typically removed from the performance context. It's something that you do outside of the performance context to go back into that context and perform, right? That's usually, this is kind of a corporate sort of approach, right? But if you're in higher ed, it's very removed from whatever is actually happening. And the intent is for that to be, for us to bridge that and transfer that to the environment, right? But it is removed. It's a removed experience. Okay. So this is instructional design. Now let's look at the similarities, but the differences also of what human performance technology typically focuses on. So for example, uh, when you're focusing on a knowledge gap in instructional design, you're actually focusing more on a performance gap in human performance technology. What do I mean by performance? Well, performance can be defined as behavior and results. Performance is behavior plus results. So you're actually trying to increase the right performance to achieve the results that this organization or this individual might have. Um, so for example, uh, if you have, uh, we'll use a, the call center environment again. Knowledge gap addresses what they need to know and some of the skills they need to have to be able to do their job. Performance gap focuses on what they actually have to do and how they need to perform to get the results the organization needs for success. Okay, so those are the differences there. Uh, the second one, where instructional design designs for learning, performance technology, human performance technology designs for performance. And it's the same thing that we just talked about before. Everything you do in human performance technology is designed to help the individual or the group perform to have that right behavior that produces their desired results. The last thing that I'll say here with uh, comparing instructional de design to human performance technology is that where an instructional event is often removed or isolated from the performance environment, uh, in, in performance technology, it's actually integrated. It integrates into the various uh, variables that actually influence performance. So it's really powerful in helping to aid that performance. So in my mind, having both of these skills really enables you to have the greatest impact possible on the organization that you're designing for. I would also say that good instructional designers become good human performance technologists. And really, in many organizations, these terms are becoming more and more synonymous. You see more and more uh, performance technologist job descriptions, or at least the tasks and abilities of a performance technologist are being integrated into the job descriptions of instructional designers. 
So it's really important, and employers are looking for these kinds of skills. An employer wants to hire someone that will help to get the results, right, improve the performance. And design does that, but only for a limited situation. Okay. So a couple of other thoughts why I think it's personally that it's very important to study hum human performance technology. So I'm just going to draw a picture really quickly here of a scale. So in my experience, um, and also in all the many degrees and certifications that I've got gained over the years, I've realized that for you to be a really impactful, excellent professional, you have to have a balance of skills, okay? And so what I would say is you need to be really proficient at specific skills. And so I would categorize instructional design skills as very specific skills that allow you to be excellent in that very clear ability to create instruction, training, and learning experiences for learners. So that's specific. But you also need to be an excellent, impactful employee. Um, you need to have a lot of general skills too. And my experience is that human performance technology allows you to bridge the specific skills you have into general uh, applications. It allows you to use this knowledge and skills and apply more of that in a, a general way within an organization. So let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, uh, actually it's been five or six years ago, I was asked to take over a learning program, a master's degree program. And in that program, as I came in to take over the program, there were actually a lot of problems. The students were, were actually just dropping out of the program entirely. Uh, the enrollment was extremely low in the program and it looked like the program might actually die. There was a lot of dissatisfaction on the part of the students and on the part of the instructors that were teaching in the program. And so when I brought my instructional design mind to this, I, I wasn't able to understand what was happening. But at that time, I acquired some understanding and took some workshops on human performance technology, and I was able to use that to analyze this program and really understand what was happening so that I could address all of those issues, which were not instructional, right? They weren't, uh, they weren't knowledge gaps. They weren't, uh, I didn't need to design anything for learning. I had to address other issues that were contributing to this failing program. And so I was able to use my HPT knowledge, uh, HPT knowledge to really turn this program around, and now it's a healthy, really successful program. So you got to have both, guys. You have to have both that specific and that general expertise to have impact in the organizations that you serve. And one other side effect, or side note on that. Um, if you ever have a desire to be a manager or a leader of instructional design or a training function or any other sort of uh, leadership position, this HPT knowledge will really be powerful because it helps you to see beyond just that learning expertise and see how your team is performing, how to help them perform better. Okay, one last thing. I would say, just to drive a couple of points ho home, I think that there are two major benefits of knowing HPT for an instructional designer. You might be saying, well, yeah, that makes sense, Dr. Gardner, but, uh, but I just wanna do instructional design. I'm not interested in those other things. Well, the first benefit I would say is that your ability to, to design increases. You do better design when you understand the performance context and all of those other variables that impact learning in, in, in the learning environment. If you understand that, then you're gonna design better. Not only that, your design will integrate better into the organization. Uh, a lot of times, many, many times, when you have a performance need, there's not only one cause. Well, they just need to be trained. Well, that, prob that might be true, right? But there may be these other variables that have a big impact. And so if you're a designer and you're working with an organization and you're trying to help them move forward, you might be able to say, okay, yeah, I think you're right, training's important, but let's just take a look at what's going on and see if there's anything else we can do along with our training to help improve that performance. So you do better design when you understand human performance technology. The second thing is impact. When you understand how to effectively use the tools of human performance technology, your ability to have an impact on the organization that you're serving, the people that you're trying to help move forward in their lives, you will, your impact will increase significantly. So this is my experience over the last six or seven years that I've really understood and grasped human performance technology. So again, I'm Dr. Gardner. This is why I think you should study performance technology and take it seriously as part of your own personal development, your own growth.